the incredible India became the epicenter of the Nipah virus, a disease that captured global attention in 2023, is linked to the simple act of a fruit bat enjoying a meal? Well, the answer may lies in the intricate web of life, where even the smallest action can ripple out, causing a wave of unforeseen consequences. Fruit bats, also known as terapist species, are often frugivorous, meaning they primarily feed on fruits. Their dietary repertoire includes a wide array of fruits, ranging from figs, bananas, mangoes, and palm fruits, to guavas, papayas, tamarind, cashews, and various wild fruits. Yes, bats are quite the fruit connoisseurs, aren't they? These winged creatures have a particular penchant for figs. You see, bats and fig trees share a fascinating mutualistic relationship. As bats feed on figs, they inadvertently pollinate the trees and disperse their seeds, thereby ensuring the survival of these trees. But their love for fruits isn't limited to figs. In regions abundant with banana farms, bats often feast on these sweet treats. Mango orchards too can't escape their attention. In fact, their fondness for ripe mangoes can sometimes lead to conflicts with farmers. Bats also have a taste for palm fruits, guavas, papayas, and tamarind. Not to mention, they've been known to snack on cashews and a wide variety of wild fruits found in forests and their natural habitats. However, the dietary preferences of bats aren't uniform across the board. While some fruit bats specialize in feeding on fruits and nectar, others have a more varied diet that includes insects or even blood, as is the case with vampire bats. The feeding habits of bats may seem trivial, but they play a significant role in the ecology of our planet. These creatures are instrumental in the pollination and seed dispersal of many fruit-bearing plants. This ecological role is crucial to the health of various ecosystems. Now you might be wondering, what do bats' feeding habits have to do with the Nipah virus? Well, the Nipah virus is believed to have originated from fruit bats. As these bats feed on fruits, they sometimes drop partially eaten fruit or saliva-infected fruit. When other animals, such as pigs, consume these dropped fruits, they can contract the virus, which can then be transmitted to humans. So, the seemingly innocuous act of a bat munching on a fruit can set off a chain of events, leading to the spread of a potentially deadly virus. It's a stark reminder of how interconnected our world truly is. Understanding these connections, these relationships, is key to preventing and managing outbreaks like the Nipah virus in the future. Have you ever wondered if there could possibly be a connection between bats, the overuse of pesticides, and an excess production of fruit? It might seem like a stretch, but there's a fascinating web of interconnectivity in our natural world that often takes us by surprise. Consider this. Bats, specifically species known as fruit bats, are natural carriers of a virus called Nipah. These bats can shed the virus in their saliva, urine, and feces. When they feed on fruits, including those grown in orchards, they can contaminate these fruits with the virus. Now imagine a human picking up one of these contaminated fruits, unaware of the danger lurking within. Consuming such a fruit can lead to a Nipah virus infection in humans, a disease that can be severe and often deadly. But where do pesticides come into play? Well, in an effort to protect crops from pests and diseases, farmers often use pesticides. These chemicals, while effective in their primary role, can have unintended consequences on the environment and its inhabitants. Pesticides can alter the habitats and food sources of bats, especially when they are broad spectrum and impact insect populations. Furthermore, the residues left behind on fruits or in the environment can affect bats that consume insects exposed to these chemicals, potentially altering their behavior or health. Disruption of ecosystems is another significant side effect of pesticide use. This disruption could lead to changes in bat behavior, migration patterns, or roosting locations. While there's no direct evidence linking pesticides to Nipah virus transmission, these indirect effects on the environment and bat behavior could potentially influence the dynamics of the virus. So, what can be done to reduce the risk of Nipah virus transmission? Awareness is key. Understanding the potential risks associated with consuming fruits that may have been contaminated by bats is crucial. Adopting proper hygiene and food safety practices, especially in regions where Nipah virus outbreaks are a concern, is another important step. Promoting sustainable agricultural practices that minimize the use of harmful pesticides and foster biodiversity can also contribute to maintaining a balanced ecosystem. This, in turn, could indirectly help in controlling the spread of the Nipah virus. Case in point, India successfully managed a Nipah virus outbreak through swift detection, isolation of cases, public education, 
protecting healthcare workers, coordinating response efforts, engaging communities, and resorting to animal culling when necessary. So, in essence, the link between bats, pesticides, and fruit overproduction is not a direct one, but a complex interplay of factors that can indirectly influence the transmission of the Nipah virus. It's a fascinating testament to the intricate balance of nature and how a single disruption can set off a ripple effect with far-reaching consequences.